Hey what's up guys welcome back to my youtube channel again and in this video we are gonna learn how to create apis again uh, why with this video because uh, we have been running this uh, dev fest series you know and uh, we have already completed the design part as well as uh, the state management and all that stuff now it will come to integrate the rest apis and all so i want you to learn how to create your apis i have already created videos on um, uh, python django okay uh, node.js and all that so right now um, I'm gonna use flask for creating API's the reason being is that I have already done a lot of work on Django and I feel personally that flask is better in creating API's if you want to create a whole web development project uh, like a UI front-end and all that then maybe you can choose Django but uh, for normally creating API's flask is good enough and because it does not give you that boilerplate stuff which comes with Django so that's one thing and also you have been requesting for flux tutorial so that's why it is here now why python because i personally feel that python is a really good language for all these things uh, because i love python and there are so many things which you can do with python and to be honest i don't personally think that dart is very good for creating apis in terms of uh, because there is not a particular um, good framework for writing backends except aqueduct um, because aqueduct is good but again i'm not sure how it will behave for um, big projects so i have a tutorial series on aqueduct as well you can check it out if you want to try it uh, then um, we can also use javascript for creating apis but then also i'm not never been a javascript fan to be honest uh, i like javascript but uh, not more than python so here it is with python it's very easy now we are gonna use a uh, pycharm as in the ide because i don't want to waste your time in uh, all the setup and all you can just install pycharm and you are good to go uh, so because whenever you are working with python projects uh, especially uh, when you are using frameworks then definitely uh, use virtual environments because of the version conflicts happens in python a lot so that's why virtual environments and uh, pycharm do, uh, like uh, does everything for you you don't have to do anything specifically so that's why pycharm and uh, again it's a very gr uh, good id for python developers um, now uh, moving ahead let's see what we are gonna do so uh, we are gonna create apis and we got we are going to use them in flutter as well so be ready for that and also leave your comments about uh, this particular series and uh, tell me your opinion about all of this and i will also talk about authentication G jwt and all that so please like the video if you really like the idea so now opening pycharm we will create a new project so you'll see you have many options here so i'm gonna select flask from here and i'm gonna give um, the name of the project let's say it's dummy api okay now in the project interpreter you will see new environment using virtual env pi pnv or conda so and uh, by default i'm gonna just select a virtual environment nothing else in the mode setting there is template language and template folder i'll just press create it will install the virtual environment as well as flask for me so you don't have to do anything yourself because it's a virtual environment so every time you will create a project you need to add all the dependencies now i'm gonna just uh, delete all of this code from here this is the app.py and uh, i'm just gonna show you that what we get with this uh, particular project is static folder which is uh, for static files templates for if you want to do the front end part then virtual environment folder itself and app.py where it was having some content but i have deleted everything now if i'll go to the terminal then you will see we have something called uh, virtual environment here as well so which means we are already in the virtual environment and uh, that's a good thing we uh, we didn't do anything right so now coming back to this app.py one thing before writing the, your flask app you should be uh, at least familiar with the python programming so you can check my video tutorials for that and if you are concerned about django or flask then also there is a link in the description which you can check um where you will get the idea also django tutorials are also available on my uh, particular uh, channel so you can check it out now um in the app.py first of all we will write from flask import flask okay then after importing flask we have to um instantiate our app so app is equal to flask and then we are gonna give the module which is underscore underscore name underscore underscore so um th that's it 
now we will write something like uh, if our name is equal to is equal to main because we are gonna run the single this single file so that's why uh, our main will be this only so what we are gonna do we will call app dot run that's it and almost we have done the api part that's the all setup you need to do isn't that amazing right uh, so now what you have to do uh, you have to write one more thing you have to write the app routes so app dot routes so first route will be our slash so if you just go to slash then what you want to do so i am just gonna return hello from okay so basically you need to define a method as well which i forgot unfortunately the uh, so def which is the keyword to write functions so here we can write uh, something like dummy api let's say okay anything will work it's totally your call and then we are gonna return let's say hello from mtech viral okay and now we will go to our terminal and we are gonna write python and the name of the file which is app.py so you will see serving flask app please loading and this is this is a development server and all that and running on 127.0.0 which is uh, the url for localhost 5000 if i'll click here it will open chrome for me i guess if i'm not wrong and here you can see we have hello from mtech viral right now if i want to change it to let's say pk mtech viral and if i want to check if it is reflected here or not then it is not reflected because we need to restart our server so we can press ctrl c and then we can again write python app.py and now if i'll refresh you can see hello from pkm tech viral okay so this is it but uh, we don't want to restart it again and again if you're familiar with the node we use something called node mon and all that which restarts our server every time we do some changes right so i'm just gonna end this server here with the terminal now i'm gonna go here in the dummy api part here on the top and i want to edit this configuration and as you can see we have something called flask underscore debug we are going to check it and we're gonna apply it so that it can help us in debugging our application so now i'm gonna click on this debug icon from here and uh, you'll see this uh, little uh, green dot which means our server is now running on the same port and uh, now debugger is also active so if you'll click hello from pkm tech viral now let's remove it and we don't restart our server we will just press ctrl s or command s and now if i'll refresh it you can see hello from mtech viral so that means it's working for us now our first api is ready now let's try this on postman and let's see if that works so i am here on in the postman and uh, now i am gonna write http uh, okay localhost 5000 and slash i'm gonna just send the request and you can see we got status 200 okay hello from mtech viral which is an html response what i want i want a json response okay rather than this html response so what i'll do from uh, flask we have already imported uh, this flask then we can import something called jsonify okay what it will do it will return so here rather than returning hello from mtech viral i'm just gonna copy it and i can use this jsonify and i can give the json object's name so let's say it is uh, something like um, data okay so data is this okay now what i'll do i'll again go back to my postman and i'll do the send request and this time you'll see status is 200 okay and this time it's a json response data hello from mtech viral right this is pretty good we haven't written anything let's say um if let's say something some something wrong happens so we can write uh, rather than data let's say we are saying error and uh, let's say we can say something something bad happened okay something like this and then we want to give it a status code let's say something bad request for 404 let's say and now i'm gonna go back to my postman i'm gonna run it and this time you will see 404 not found and error something bad happened something like this so it's a very easy to use first of all and uh, 
yeah it's very interesting right <laughs> so uh, let me just give you one more um, quick idea let's say if i want to pass some parameters as well in the url and then i want to get that so how we are gonna get it so data in the data i'm gonna pass let's say um so here what i can do i can import one more thing which is request and here let's say i have a variable name so i'm gonna get it from request so request dot args dot get and i can pass the variable name which is name and here i can say the name in the data okay and then i'll send 200 so now if i'll open postman here in the body part in the form data i will add a key name and i will add a value here as well as per one so if i'll make a send request get request so i will i am receiving data is null because okay it is not url encoded so i'm gonna add name okay okay per one okay this is not working why this is not working because we are putting the data here if we will put the data in the url then only it will work this is totally for url parameters uh, for that different uh, stuff I, i'm gonna show you how that works so let's say we are adding name here and then we are writing power then if i'll send this request then you will see data is equal to power and we are getting status 200 okay now um let's say we don't want that okay we want uh, our data to be um they are um so what we can do we can use this and we can use something like this where we can say string we want a string and then we want name okay and then we can say here name which is of type string and that means we will receive the data something like this okay and then um so basically this this is how we will get that name okay and that's it i guess so now if i'll just save it if i'll go back to my postman and rather than this uh, name i will just write power here okay and if i'll just click send then you will see data is equal to power and if i'll remove this then also it is working so it, it's you don't need this part okay now um, how to add data here in the form that i will also tell you because we can use the same this request uh, uh, this request and uh, then we can get the form data as well so that's the idea and um, I'm gonna use SQL alchemy and all that uh, ORM thing which can be helpful uh, will with uh, we will be working with SQLite and all that so that we will do in next tutorial so uh, I guess this is enough for this tutorial and I just gave you an idea that how easy it is if you'll go to this route then you will see there is something called methods as well where you can just simply say post get and all that so that's also there so it's very easy so let me know in the comments that what's your opinion about this series and then only i will continue it if you really want it to uh, want me to continue it then um, i i really want something around 200 likes on this video so thank you so much guys for watching and i'll see in the next video bye bye take care and uh, keep learning